Yeah, this should be quicker than that. Oh my god. So this is exactly what I'm talking about. When I said I want to meet owners of cars, I want to meet owners of cars like this. Look at this thing here. It's a car that I've definitely never filmed before. I've never been in one, don't know loads about them, uh, but I've reached out to my subscribers to meet owners of things like this. It's a Lotus Exige. We've got James, the owner, somewhere behind me over there. There he is. And uh, we're going to meet James, see why he's bought this car, see what it's all about, and go for a little drive in it. So James, thanks for coming down today. Good to meet you, mate. Yeah. It's good to meet you, man. So you come down, this is a random car. This is it's a wicked car. And this is exactly what I was talking about. When I reached out to the subscribers and I said, I want to get cars, interesting cars on my channel. I've definitely never had a Lotus Exige in stock. So um, what's inspired you? And you know, let's talk about the engine on this car first, before yeah. we talk about the inspiration. Um, the 350 badge on the back, what does that mean? Yeah, so 350 PS. 300. It's a 3.5 litre V6. Apple to Camry <laughs> and a supercharged. So it's got a Japanese engine, yeah? yeah. Three and a half litre V6 supercharged, yep. 350 horsepower with a manual gearbox change, yeah? Too right. This yep. is, but for someone to buy this car, it says a lot about you as a person, yeah? So let's talk about the story of where this all started. Yeah, well, uh, I had a, I had an Evo, that's how I found your channel. Yeah. The first place, Evo 10, FQ360. Nice. Love that car to exactly bits. Exactly the same as what I had. Yeah, it was fantastic. Um, Got a bit sick of trying to get parts for it. Came really difficult, expensive as well, because mm -hmm. obviously they're leaving, aren't they? They're going to, they quit in the UK. Yeah. So it just became a bit challenging to get parts for it. So just trying to find something similar, nothing out there. Went for an M2 comp, didn't really uh, get to grips with it. It was a great car. Just great not, car, not I think they're amazing, yeah. Yeah, it was good, it was good, just not quite for me. Um, and then I saw the Lotus Amira, and I put it up for sale and sold it in a week, <laughs> got rid of it. And uh, yeah, put a deposit down for an Amira. Okay. And uh, then I went to, um, went just on a whim went to test drive one of these at the Lotus dealership and was blown away by it and uh, came over there. I test drove a 410 which has 60 more horsepower, horsepower and has this crazy exhaust that I've now fit to this one and I tried to drive it gently knowing I couldn't quite reach to a 410 mm -hmm. um, but the colour on this yeah it was in the dealership and it just yeah colour blew me away to be fair Mate, as well. Mate that colour is mad. seriously special like yeah. when I pulled in this morning I see you here and I looked at even like the rear end the way that the appearance of this car yeah. it's no it joke. It's it, 90s doesn't it even it, though it's it quite new yeah it, looks it does retro. look old school. Yeah it does it does and even the the open gated yeah, manual yeah. gearbox it looks yeah. amazing inside doesn't it so nice yeah it's a proper driver's car so the exige they've been around since the early 2000s yeah i think it's like 2000 2001 something like that and yeah. it's obviously still making them now this is no they stopped making them last year okay so this is yeah. the last of an exige so i was going i was looking to get a 390 final edition which was this car's replacement for last year mm -hmm. so this car's not 2021 it's from before that okay um couldn't find any 390s because i got there a bit late um so then it was kind of down to a 350 and just based on color there was a few of them left mm -hmm. yeah so we came this one fair play man i think it's a great choice car what about uh spec levels Do they have different spec options on yeah them? it's got it's got um it's got aircon it's got <laughs> that's it that's yeah, it it's um five star spec rating yeah it's got the um it's got did yeah. you say it's got uh mats as well yeah it's got uh it's got carpets it's got mats I'm trying to think, honestly. <laughs> it's got the interior colours, that was an option. I was going to say, the stitching's quite nice, isn't it? That's no, quite... I like the blue paint on the gear stick there. Ah, okay, let's the... put the... Yeah. And what's funny as well, so we were just talking off camera just now, it's got a few voxel bits, like old voxel bits, isn't it? Yeah, so and uh, Metro stuff and all sorts of... It... Spot, spot the bits, we won't tell you, see if you can spot the video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, no, I, my first car was a voxel Calibra, so um, I'll put a little slider of what this has on the, on the screen now in relation to my <laughs> voxel Calibra, but yeah. Wick, wicked car though man it's what british sports car brands are all about absolutely i had a, a lotus esprit on the channel which you know yeah um, bit of a different animal to this i would say they're a bit heavy yeah bit... And that was main reason really for reaching out was just i thought this is something that you're probably not going to get to see very often and definitely not nor are many people watching these videos so and i think that's what these different car isn't it we were just talking about this this is what these videos are all about because you as a Lotus Exige owner, you probably would have gone on YouTube, looked around, trying to find an owner's review. You know, you're the, yeah. you're the perfect person really to, to tell everyone what it's like to own one of these cars. Also, because it's pre-2020, it has got the exhaust button that was done away with for emissions. Okay. So the valve can be overridden and opened a bit more. So it's a bit noisier than you. We'll, we'll get it started shortly. Yeah. <laughs> um, anything more that we want to report on the interior? <sighs> I'm more thinking about how me and you going to... the Alcantara steering wheel. That's the Alcantara option. steering wheel. Yeah. Oh, that's nice, yeah. yeah but I was just about to say, I'm more concerned about how me and you are going to fit in there comfortably. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be interesting. So, yeah, let's um, let's jump in, get started and hit the road, yeah? 
Sounds good. What did you say, foot, bum, foot? Yeah. Oh, I'm getting your car dirty, mate, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh. Wow. It's tight. It's like a car. <laughs> I think that's what's interesting about this car, though. So, um, go on, start the engine. Yeah. Get it idling. Listen to that. So, yeah, it's, it's a sort of a, it's, it's not really a road car, is it? I know you drive on the road. You don't daily drive this, right? No, nah, not at all. No. So how many miles have you done in it since you've had it? It's on about 3,000. Oh, right. So you've done a bit, a bit of driving in it then. Yeah, and it's literally just a weekend car. Oh, yeah. Try the window a little bit because it's going to get, it, gonna yeah. get hot. It, Shall I press the... Um, yeah, let's do both a little bit like that. The Vauxhall Astra switch, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, for, uh, real drive. Yep. It's got a little boot as well, I noticed. Sort of. Kind of. Yeah. Uh, at the front, you can't store nothing at the front. No. Nah. So there's no storage compartment at the front. Um, got a shelf. Got a little shelf. Yeah. Got a drinks holder that no drink will fit in. It's useless. Is that really what that's meant to be? Yeah. <laughs> you Literally couldn't... nothing fits in it. I've got a bottle that sort of lives on the top here, but it just falls out when you put your foot down. You can fit the draggy box in there, which is quite handy. Yeah. That'd be good for that. How much does this thing weigh? Uh, 1100, 1125. It's size. unbelievable. So yeah. 350 horsepower, 1100 kilos. It's um, that steering wheel's tiny, isn't it? That is funny, man. Right. So the exhaust, that's quite a big thing for you, isn't it? You've mentioned the exhaust a lot. So you, yeah. you bought it with a stock exhaust. Yep. And you've upgraded the exhaust system. Yeah. What, what have you done to it? So it's um, it is a wide pipe and a silencer from a 380 410, which is sort of like a higher model. Okay. And this one, they come with a bit of standard. And uh, yeah, this one comes with a slightly quieter exhaust and. It still sounds pretty good to be fair, but it just, yeah, not quite as exciting as this. Mate, it sounds incredible. Just give it a quick little rev for us. Hold on, let's get it in there. Do you know what, that's a point worth making. So currently it's in normal mode. Yeah, yeah, so that's sport, and you can hear the valve opens, and then I've got an override, which the newer cars don't have for an emissions thing, now it's exhaust open. The, I don't know, like a, a V12 or something, didn't it? Did it sound good? It sounds mental, yeah. And I think that's it's always hard to give sound for a camera. Like, I don't know if how well this is all being picked up. <laughs> but it does sound, um, it sounds like a proper race car, doesn't it? Yeah. What about the supercharger? Do you hear that winding when you're No, so the that's the one thing, is when I test drove the 410, you could hear the supercharger. This one you can't. Really? Um, and I'm, one thing I'll probably do if I've got it after it's um, warranty expires is I'll do like a stage one, get the induction changed, and then you get that whirring, which, yeah. is, which is exactly what you need. Yeah, it was actually, exactly it's what it's missing that a little bit, but the exhaust does make up for it, but it does need that supercharger work because it, yeah, it sounds even better. Yeah, yeah, add to, add to the feel. Yeah, yeah. Cool, man. And well, actually, the, the 410s, when I test drove it, it had like a, like the actuator was just there and mm -hmm. it flicks up and down as you put your foot down. It's just nice seeing the engine moving as you're accelerating. Yeah, yeah, And that's this one not, doesn't have that doesn't either. Have that motion, yeah. Yeah, but, you know. Mate, look at the engine thing. bay there. Yeah. That, is, that is incredible. Because it's obviously. That looks like a Vauxhall part. <laughs> that definitely is a Vauxhall part. <laughs> and this roof comes off as well, yeah? Yeah, so it's not really meant to come off, but it does come off and, yeah, there's no problem driving it. Even the fact the engine bay, it's obviously it's basically a brand new car, isn't it? It is yeah, absolutely mint. Yeah. It must feel, feel it, quick. It, it feels good, but it feels so much quicker than it is. I reckon, like, if we do draggy times, it probably won't be that fast. Up there. I suppose but, being a manual as well, you're a bit restricted Yeah, yeah, there. but I think I can, uh, I think it gets to maybe about 70 and then you need to change. So I might even be able to do it in second gear. Okay, cool. Which will help it out, yeah, but yeah, yeah. I'm not actually sure because I don't generally drive it up to the red line, but. No, no, yeah. no. That'd be interesting to see, wouldn't it? Yeah. Mate, this is, <laughs> look how close. I know. <laughs> Yeah, you've got to like the person that's in the car. <laughs> Definitely. You need an ejector seat or something. <laughs> oh my god, right, yeah, let's hit the road.
right, so you come out of an M2 competition, like what a, that's a mad change, isn't it? So yeah. when you was in the frame of mind about buying an M2 competition, you obviously wanted something refined, something German, you know. Yeah, well originally. There's, there's two was, different mindsets there, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, I was going to kind of keep my Evo 10. We're going to go right here, this is the bumpy road. Oh, this, is, this is, we're going to put this car to the test. So yeah, go on, sorry. Uh, yeah, so I had my Evo at the time and I was going to get an M140 and keep them both. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, and then I thought I might as well go the full hog and uh, get, that's not that bad, is it? It's not too bad, is it? Yeah, so I just went M2 comp, got the full hog. Yeah, um, so sort of combination of everything. Yeah, so sold sold the, uh, the Evo, yeah. got the M2. Um, really impressed with it to start with, but just never really kind of loved it. I only did 2,500 miles in it in the first year. Okay. I've done more in this, and this is a harder car to you know take out. It's more effort to take it out. But even that, yeah, that's mad. Great fun on the track. I see you've got your Cadwell Park sticker up on the window as well. Yeah, so this, yeah it's you've amazing. even took it on a track. That is brilliant. Gets tight at the end. Stops really well. It's got the AP racing brakes. Yeah. Are they factory? Are they from factory? Yeah, factory. Yeah. Little burbles there. <laughs> Mate, this That's is a good. wicked car. The other thing is the steering. I thought the steering in the M2 was okay, but this is like I can see that it's man. It's just crazy, and that was one thing I realised after drive, just test driving this how bad the steering in the M2 actually is. So growing up, was you a Lotus fan? So we mentioned earlier, like in the nineties, Lotus was a sorry, going left there. Yeah. Lotus was a big brand, wasn't it? Yeah, do you know what? It was always the um, the older Exceders. I used to see one um, at a Shell petrol station, and when he pulled away, it sounded mental. And I was like, eh, I could do one of them, maybe. Yeah. Um, but I was always thinking, I'll just stick with my uh, my Evos. And uh, yeah, just low as it was. And then price wise, how much is one of these? These. This was sixty nine. I think the starting price was sixty five. Okay. Um, but obviously, this was already spec, so I, you know, I didn't spec anything on it. It's up, no yeah. like it's, it's just there, isn't it? I think that's because of the weight. It just it doesn't. This doesn't feel like 350 horsepower to me. Nah. It feels like a bit more than that. But I think it's just because you're so low to the ground. Yeah. And when I get out of this and like get into my family car, which is just a normal like box Astra, good okay. enough. Oh right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah, just getting in that feels like I'm jumping in a massive tank. <laughs> Go. Got it. Yeah, that's quite a comparable car. 350 horsepower, uh, 911, sorry, 997. Um, manual gearbox, that done it in 5.10 seconds. That's obviously a heavier car. Yeah, that's interesting. Four wheel drive. Four wheel drive? Yeah, this should be quicker than that. But then this has got me in the car as well. I know that's. Yeah, I mean, it's all relevant. It's all early fives. It's pretty good. I mean, it's, it's hard to compare, isn't it? Because I know non 60 is only. Um, 3.8, but obviously you've got to get your gears perfect. You've got to get your gears right. That's, yeah, yeah. I think you're doing a good job, mate. That's it. <laughs> that was a bad gear change. And even with the bad gear change, you want the results? Go on. You shaved the whole second off, oh mate. 4.37 seconds. So, when we look at the leaderboard, um, that is the same. Oh my god. That's this sums this car up, yeah? That is the same as the W204 C63 AMG salute. That done in 4.38 seconds. Do you know what, let me just pause the video there a sec because when I was filming this video, I hadn't yet done the video on the Camaro ZL1 and that is just above the Lotus Exige on the draggy leaderboard. 
That car is 650 brake horsepower. It's also supercharged. It's also got a manual gearbox, but that's pretty impressive, isn't it? Let's get back to the video. Hey, that's amazing. An eight, the C63 AMG, 450 brake horsepower, V8. Um, the next car up is a BMW M4 Comp. That is incredible with a manual gearbox, man. That's unbelievable. And that is, you know, credit to Lotus as a brand because they've built this car. We've briefly mentioned brakes, we've mentioned suspension, which feels unbelievable. The weight of the car, the fact that it's got a manual gearbox, performance, the, the, the engine, I think the engines are, you know, it's a great shout putting that engine in this car, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it works, just, just works somehow. And, and, you know, you as a guy who was driving an M2 Com, you've gone out and bought this car to sort of fill a, a gap, I suppose and it does it perfectly, doesn't it? Yeah, this is, <laughs> compared to the M2, this is just more of a weekend car. It, it just is. feels so much more special when you get in it. Definitely. I, mean, I, I miss some heated seats, but <laughs> it's not the end of the world. But for you, if you want to go out and have a little fun drive on your own, cause, let's face it, me and you sat in here, ain't the nicest thing in the world, <laughs> is it? And, but it, it, if you're on your own, little like, evening drive, what a great car. And even for a track day, you said you took on a track, You've got no brake fade, the suspension was good, tyres were great. Yeah. Sorry, we're gonna go right here. If you know you've if, what's where's the bad points with this car, mate? Yeah, just uh, maybe some storage, you can actually take it away a bit further, well, you know, but it's got a little bit of space. I could squeeze a bag or two in the back if I'm lucky. I, honestly, I am I'm seriously impressed with this car. What a bloody brilliant car, and I think values a big factor I, I do feel like they might just dip a little bit like any new car yeah, does yeah. but I think they will hold their money quite well because they they really are in a league of their own aren't they yeah it's, it's, it, there isn't much comparison out there. I kind of think that Alfa Romeo might be the closest thing but it hasn't got a manual gearbox um, the four, it's not got four a six. Yeah. yeah I think that's a four cylinder in there four cylinder engine yeah yeah an Alfa Romeo 4C that is a great choice of car as well um, but I would say Lotus, Alfa Romeo, but every brand's got its own following and Lotus has definitely got a strong following here in the UK, isn't it? Yeah. And oh, it's, it's, it makes a difference. Um, the, everyone who's got a Lotus, you know they're a car enthusiast because you have to give away a few things to have one of these cars, like getting over those sills. Yeah. You know? Whereas yeah. in, your, in your M2, I, I just imagine like a bloke going into the dealership saying give me the top of the range 2 series and he's come out of an M2. Is yeah. necessary a petrol head, is he? Uh, that's why I said earlier, it says a lot about you buying a car like this. Guys, we're going to wrap it up, leave us out. If anyone's got any cars that they want to, you know, anything different like this, doesn't even need to be like this. And I mentioned on my Instagram as well recently that if, if you've got a story about a car, it's not all about just about the cars. If you've got a story yourself about a car, maybe you've, I don't know, uh, had a, a problem with a car it doesn't it's not all about the car it could be a story that you've got about a car so keep that in mind as well anything interesting do reach out i want to get more subscribers on the channel more interesting cars on the channel and just add like a a, a new chapter to the channel so yeah do reach out email me calvin at calvinscardiary.com and um yeah gonna leave it at that if you want are you, are you on instagram you're on instagram aren't you? yeah i'm on instagram should we put your instagram in the description yeah go for it yeah I'll put uh, a link to James' Instagram in the description below as well. And uh, done. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. If you want to see more car content, check this video out here.